Traveling the Vortex. We've joined the Doctor as he travels the Vortex and watch out for the magic who's he watch it. It's episode 348. I'm Keith. I'm Sean. I'm Glenn. How are you guys? I'm trying to figure out what the magic who's he watch it was. That's what Tegan called the Magellan Cloud or whatever it is. Oh. Uh, Magellanic uh, Cloud. Okay. I didn't remember that. I didn't either. Oh. That stood out, out, out to me. Now that you say that, I remember that. I remember laughing at it at the time she said it. And now I remember. <laughs> Do you guys have a good week? The kids' show opened this weekend. So. What show? Ramona Quimby. Ah, how it was, was it? it? It was good. It was enjoyable. I, it's one of the better shows I've seen them in. So, We watched the first season of Broadchurch. And? It's really good. It is one of the best murder mysteries I've seen in a long time. Didn't see who did it until the final episode. Like, right up until they pretty much revealed it to us. Oh, wow. Yeah. They make you think almost everybody else until you finally... <laughs> I like those. Yeah. It's really good. And Jodie Whittaker does a fantastic job. I'll go add that to my list. You should. You should fast track it. Get Patrick to watch it. We did watch the Orville as part of our weekly show. Does anybody else? I watched it. I watched the pilot. Yeah. What'd you guys think? It was pretty good. It's good. I think it doesn't go far enough with the humor. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, I didn't... There were a couple times where I kind of laughed, but... Well... I thought there were funny parts, and the and the parts in it that were meant to be funny, I laughed out loud. But it's in that, and I had to give it some time because I liked it. I really enjoyed it, but I'll give it some time because I think it 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 hasn't decided what it wants to be yet, and I don't think it has to be. I don't think it has to identify itself as a comedy or a drama, but it's almost too far one way right now, and I think right now it's the drama side of it. I think it think it comes back to what you were talking about a few weeks ago with us about how. You know, he said, make it feel like Star Trek Next Gen. And it does. It really does. Yeah. But yeah. it doesn't feel so much like Seth MacFarlane. And I think that's what I'm a little apprehensive about. But like I say, I need to give it a chance. Well, and that's one of the things I actually appreciated about it was it didn't feel like Seth MacFarlane. Well, I didn't I didn't want it to be Family Guy or How, yeah. how the West how the West was wanted. M- million Ways to Die. Million Ways to Die in the Old West. I didn't want it to be that, but I wanted it a little bit more on the MacFarlane side. I think it's, uh, I think it's twofold. I think... Seth is obviously such a fan of Star Trek that it almost felt like maybe he was afraid to lampoon it too much because it's it's it feels like it's maybe hollowed ground for him. Um, but I also think there was uh, some some fault with the marketing at Fox when they're going the new comedy from Seth MacFarlane. It's like yeah, it's not really a comedy. <laughs> it's, it's got funny moments in it. It's you know. Um, but you know, when, when they're at the the, the Comic Con panels talking about how we were really trying to hit mash level, we're kind of serious and kind of funny at the same yeah. time. <laughs> so you know, the Star Trek fan in me was very very pleased with most of it. It was like this is great, this is really cool. I love the you know, um, the, the the humor bits were. I, I wish I hadn't seen them all in the trailer. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to this week's episode because I haven't seen it yet, and yeah. it's like well, it'll all be new to me this week because I haven't seen anything on it. I'm glad everybody watched it though. Yeah. Other than that, uh, we worked on a puzzle this weekend when we had uh, Katrina over. That's about it. Glenn, did you watch anything besides your play? I didn't. I read um, I read the graphic novel, which collects the Inhumans' first 12 stories from 2013, I think it was. Uh, I can't remember the name of the storyline, but it's it's what a lot of people supposed was going to set up the TV series, or at least mm-hmm. the B. I hope it doesn't. <laughs> I don't know if you saw my read, Goodreads review, but it's kind of a boring middling story oh. with some really pretty artwork, but it doesn't save the story. And so I, I was a bit disappointed with it. But it's 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 a twelve issue arc, and I trodged <laughs> through it, but got all the way through it. But it, you know, it was what it is. But that was about all I did. Let's move on to some news then. All right, our first bit of news is some unfortunate news that. Uh, Carol Ann Ford has had to cancel her appearance at Time Eddie this year. Aww. Yeah. Any particular reason? They did not say. I hope it's not something serious. I hope not, too. Unfortunately, she's no longer a 10. The panels involving her will now feature William Russell making a very rare stateside appearance. So, 
the panels that luckily they had they don't have to completely rearrange the schedule because there was a two person. They were panel. dual panels anyway. Yeah. yeah. So now it's just one. And we are moderating that panel. One of them, yes. Yes. Um, so I guess we'll just focus a lot more on William Russell than we would have on Caroline. <laughs> you didn't know Ford. that you didn't know it oh, I thought you knew. What? About, about the cancellation. The cancellation. No, I this is oh, the first I I've heard of it was no. Oh. Well, speaking of first doctor related things, uh, Big Finish made a big announcement on Friday. Yeah, they did. <laughs> <laughs> the first Doctor <clears throat> Adventures starring David Bradley. A box set. Yeah. Not only will it be David Bradley playing the first doctor, we will have Jimma Powell as Barbara Wrights, Jamie Glover as Ian Chesterton, and Claudia Grants as Susan. If those names sound somewhat familiar, that's because they were all cast as the respective characters' actors in An Adventure in Space and Time. Okay, so this brings up what I feel is... I'm conflicted about this. Yeah, there you go. Because Had William Russell and Caroline Ford passed away already, I would feel very differently. But had the since the two of them are still with us and still doing Big Finish, and as we've heard, can slip back into their voices pretty easily, I kind of wish those two hadn't been recast. Does it make sense? And I, sentimentally, I agree with you. I, I 100% am there because I, 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 I don't... I don't understand why you would recast somebody when you have that somebody playing that role in other productions. It seems awkward. Unless it's from the standpoint that because we have recast the first Doctor and are going with this, you know, we're, we're basically treating it as this whole group and we're going to use this whole group, does that then maybe make it a little more okay so that you don't have... A voice or two that is fairly disparaging difference age-wise from the other people you have cast. You, you know what I'm saying? I mean, does it make sense to cast one person as Susan and put her with the existing Ian and, and, and or uh, uh, you cast one a new Barbara and put her with the existing Ian and Susan if you're already recasting the first Doctor as well? Or is it maybe easier just to go ahead and say, here's everybody at once? I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I, I'm not really sure how I feel about it. And the, on the one hand, it's like, oh, I don't like that. And on the other hand, it's like, well, yeah, it kind of makes sense because these were all the actors that we saw in Adventure in Space and Time. So giving them the opportunity to kind of pick up that torch and run with it, I think, is kind of a cool experiment. Whether it'll work or not, I don't know. I haven't really got to listen to the audio to find out. But They have two box sets planned. The first one coming out at the end of the year and then another box set come out next year. So, Glenn, what are your thoughts? I'm happy that people are happy. It seems like there's been an overwhelmingly positive response to it, so I'm encouraged by that. Um, beyond that, I'm just going to wait till it comes out. I'll make my judgment then. So, you can so here's... Uh, you want to know... It's not really a spoiler because they've announced this other bit of casting in this box, in one of these stories. The War Chief's coming back? No. <laughs> but the first incarnation of the master is going to be in it oh yeah played yeah. by james dreyfus that's what i said the war chief is coming <laughs> back so that's i'm i'm almost more excited about that than anything else just to to see or hear a first doctor and first master kind of interaction maybe yeah <laughs> <laughs> i don't know I, the, the master works so well as a foil for the third doctor the first Doctor, I almost feel like he wouldn't have time for it. You know, he's, he's the whole, oh, my dear Doctor. is like, my boy! I, you know, he, he would just, I kind of feel like he would fly off the handle and just, you know, literally, I don't have time for your shenanigans right now. There, there are vast, he, I, don't, I don't feel like the first Doctor in any way would have appreciated the game playing that the master with with, well, with we, we missed the Sherlock Moriarty of it all. Yeah. yeah. With, with the third doctor as aggravating as it was, he played along. He 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 kind of sort of as frustrating or as aggravating or you know you know whatever. He would play along with it because there was kind of an element of gamemanship about the third doctor and one-upsmanship about the third doctor 
that he kind of fell into that Sherlock role a little easier. And I don't see the first Doctor as having that sentimentality. Nor do I see the second Doctor as having... Yeah. Just the, the, the personality-wise are, are so vastly different that I don't know. Well, I wonder if... They, uh, I would think Big Finish would recognize that and so write the Master yeah, I'm sure. differently, yeah, too. I'm so sure. maybe he won't show up as the, the game player and will be... Uh, just a different appear uh, approach to the master that we haven't seen before. Yeah, which would make sense for an earlier incarnation too. Yeah, very easily. Maybe he shows up as a friend, and then kind of things take a turn or something. Well, and depending upon which version of <laughs> the master's history you want to go with, you know. Well, yeah, that's true. Because <laughs> they either knew each other at school, or they knew each other as kids, or they knew each other. <laughs> We don't know. We're all. <laughs> We're all. One of those was a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Why couldn't they know each other at school or know each other as kids? Usually people attend school as kids. They may have. Yeah. Or it may not have been until the academy. We, we, th- th- there, there have been multiple thoughts postulated on how they... I, mean, I, I thought you were going with the level of evil of the master. Well, that could be Depending too. Depending on the version of the, the, the story you go with. Because, yeah. I mean, you go with the drum... If it's the, the drummed version... Depending on how you how you view all of that. Well, that's canon. I don't know that you can really pick and choose yeah, that but part. The way of the, it, but... the way like a brief history of Time Lords puts it, it encapsulates it more to the Sims incarnation and doesn't cast the drums into Delgado or Ainsley as much. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I I don't know. In in my my, my personal head canon I just treat that as they all heard it. It just reached its symphony, and, but and, yeah, it, and it was Sims. it was Sims Master is the one who ultimately was affected the most by it, either because of the longevity of having to deal with it, or maybe they got louder as he got closer to that event. Okay. You know, there, there, there's any number of things that I could go, eh, okay, but I, there's not a doubt in my mind that Delcado heard them. He just could tune them out, right. clamp down a little harder than than maybe some of the others. Which then brings up an interesting question about Ainley that I can't go into because we haven't watched that yet. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, you know, more more first Doctor stories. Okay, I think it's a coup for Big Finish to get Bradley. Oh so. yeah, it really is. Uh, another bit of news. So, we've... and in a weird way, kind of legitimizes his appearance as the Doctor, even more so than the Christmas special. I mean, it just, I mean, you know, he's, he's going you mean to be showing up on the show proper as the doctor well, doesn't legitimize him enough. No, it, it, it does, but it, it's, you know, it's not a one off anymore. It's a, oh, I see what you're saying. You know, oh, it further legitimizes. Further legitimizes. Okay, I got you. Had Richard Hearn, though, did some big finish audios, it would have been different for yeah. him, too, a little bit. Yeah, he's still a placeholder. I thought that was John a, Hurt wasn't really the Doctor until he did some more. I was listening. Audios. Now he's the Doctor. I was listening to a Doctor Who podcast. Well, they're really they're, they're kind of a they kind of a broad range pop culture co- podcast, but they focus on Doctor Who considerably. And they were discussing this week the announcement of David Bradley. I'm a little behind um, <laughs> because they were getting ready to review the third Doctors or the third Doctors, the three Doctors, and they were talking about the announcement and. I, they must be relatively new to Doctor Who because they were talking about, you know, well, what, what do you think of the casting of David Bradley as, as the Doctor? And every one of them went into this diatribe and saying, I don't know, can you really, will that make people of the classic series upset that they've recast the original Doctor as another actor? And they went on and on and on and trotted about questioning whether they thought that people would be upset about that. Can you really do that? Can you recast one of the Doctors? And the whole time I'm sitting there going, none of you have seen the five doctors. <laughs> <laughs> it was 25 years ago they did that. <laughs> I, I don't know. It was just it was interesting. So or 30 years ago that they did that yeah. almost. Do we know how people felt then? Yeah, you don't know. <laughs> Twitter wasn't around. Well, so. yeah, I've... Twitter, Facebook, none of that was around back then. I, you would, I guess you'd have to go into the fanzines in order to figure out <laughs> if people were complaining about that kind of thing. I don't know. I, I remember as a kid watching it. And not noticing. <laughs> well, I didn't notice because I hadn't ever seen any of Hartnell's stuff except for that clip at the very beginning yeah, when I first I, saw it. I'd so. seen, I don't know, maybe 
maybe two other Hartnells at the time. Probably, probably an unearthly child somewhere. But, you know, I was aware of him. But then watched it and really didn't even notice that that wasn't Hartnell. I was that kind of oblivious to it. As a kid, you're, you, yeah, those you just, kids don't recognize that sort well, of thing anyway. Because he's the first Doctor. That's yeah, that's my... you know. So it wasn't until later as an adult that I even knew that that was a different actor. And at that point, because I'd grown up with Richard Herndl and the five Doctors, it didn't phase me that they had recast him. Versus if something were to come out now, I kind of have that, mm, maybe, you know. It, it depends on who they get to do it. You know, well, that's what they were saying. They said... That's that's likened to what you know. What are they? What, what if they recast the fourth Doctor? I mean, people would just go crazy over that. And I kind of I saw the point that they were drawing there, but they were they were casting that in you know uh, parallel to uh, David Bradley playing the first yeah. Doctor. And I thought you've done this before once. I think this <laughs> kind of softens the blow a little bit when it's already been done. This is the third guy to play the first Doctor. Yeah. I think it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, in other news, so we more news. Holy there, cow! There's more news. There's lots of news. It's a bumper this week. week this week. It's a bumper week. <laughs> bumper week. Uh, so you guys remember that poetry book that we talked about a couple weeks ago? We like are a couple months ago. Yeah, we yeah. are six hundred with drawings by RTD. Yes. Okay, I'll play along. So there's a poem in it. Saying that Harriet Jones didn't die. Oh, I saw that announcement this week too. <laughs> What do you guys think of that? I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> a poem depicting how she escaped death from the Daleks. I need to read it before I can cast any judgment. No, on I'm it. fine with that. It's his, it's his character. Oh, yeah, All power to him. RTD, I mean, it's canon. <laughs> <laughs> no, Although I don't think RTD wrote the poem. He just uh, illustrated it. Yeah, it was uh, James, James Goss, Goss, I think. Yeah. Is the... Well, I think if RTD illustrated it, he obviously gave his rubber stamp of <laughs> approval on it. So, Apparently in the same book, there's an illustration... With a chest, giving something a little, little something for every single doctor, and I think it was a there's a person there for Jodie Whittaker. I think Goss is friends with Chibnall. I think they're well. I, I that good also friends. RTD found out earlier, and I apparently. sort of I sort of wonder if Goss is trying to bring Jones back so that Chibnall can put her in the series. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, I don't know. It, it, more Harriet Jones Prime Minute? Yes. <laughs> when's that unit box set coming out? <laughs> when's, when's Big Finish going to get Harriet Jones Prime yeah. Minister? I'd, I'd listen to a whole box set of those. <laughs> She's former Prime Minister by the time, though, that she sees her perhaps demise. Yeah, but you could have some of her audios while she's Prime Minister. You could call it the Golden before, Age. Before the fight. Yeah, age. yeah, see? <laughs> I'm all for that. Hey, big finish. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> we got this. If she'd only stuck with unit and not initiated Torchwood, we'd have been all right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or she'd have been all right. Her career, I suppose. Yeah, that's yeah, exciting. You're just saying I'm that because you don't like Torchwood. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. It's, I'm, I'm fine with that. I, I, I think it's cool. I don't know. You're looking Is forward there to been her any maybe sort of, coming back? No, I've been, I've been, I'm, I'm looking forward to the fact that... She, yeah, she's alive. I'm fine with that. There, is there, what's been the reaction? I get to delve, delve the, the, the reaction's reaction been excitement. Has it? Okay. Yeah. Then I'm happy people are happy. <laughs> and our last bit of news, uh, after November 23rd, we can add this to the next game night. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did hear Sean, about this. I knew Sean would be excited about this I one. I am so excited about Doctor this Doctor Who Flux. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I am <laughs> so excited, about that excited by and, this one. And, 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 it's not just new series. Yes. You see the pictures of the cards? The pictures, yeah. They at least have classic Doctors. Which, the only concern that I have, just based on the picture, and I'm, I'm sure the, the, the folks over at Looney Labs are pretty good about not breaking a game, but one of the goals was, um, I don't know if you have the picture up in front of you, but there, you, uh-huh. you, you can see in, this, in the screenshot, they've got several of the goals. And for those of you that haven't played Flux... It's phenomenal. It's this great game, but you get a goal that you have to work for, and then you have to collect cards to achieve that goal. But somebody else might change the goal. And the rules are always changing. Yeah, always in flux. Oh, that's a, yeah, but one of the goals was like the Doctor and the Robot or uh, something, and it, basically you you need the Doctor and Canine, or the two yes. keepers that you would need to win. But the fact that it has thirteen, fourteen, I don't, I'm not sure how many of them are in there, depending on how far up the show goes. 
that would seem like that makes that goal. I bet there's only one, but there's only one canine. Right, so. but you you have a one in one chance of getting canine versus a one in fourteen chance of getting one of the doctor cards that you would need. So it just seemed like that was kind of a weird. Ah, oh, okay. Well, there's a lot of there's other ones too. I mean, there's the doctor and a Dalek. There's a doctor and Captain Jack that you need to get. So that's what I mean. Is it just un- unlike every other game of Flux, which it might has just been, be a quicker end? You know, the, the the goal is you need milk and cookies. Well, there's only one milk card. There's only one cookies card. So the the odds of you getting those two cards together, you know, but if you have fourteen milk cards, then okay. don't you suppose there's a mechanic in the game though? Well, that's what I'm assuming. I mean, creepers the, obviously added a, a, yeah an element of which it I played with those for the first time. It's hard to last unload night, those sometimes. So yeah, um, but uh, yeah, because if you have a creeper, you can't win, right? Unless it's a creeper card and, on the goal, and there so. are there un there are difficult to unload sometimes too. So yeah. I'm ass- I'm assuming they've figured something out with yeah. the mechanic of how that works. Yeah. But yeah, I'm so excited for that. I suppose they could also have made it. Who knows? I can't quite read it. There could be. Looks like there are some conditions. Doctor specific. Yeah. Card. You have, like Grand Theft Tardis. You have to have the first Doctor and the Tardis. So that sort of thing. Yeah. All right. And the robot Doctor and robot might be. Fourth Doctor and K nine. So well, that's then, what I would have thought, but it, it, brings it, it, it didn't specify that. And I'm wondering maybe if because the tenth Doctor and K nine hung out, well, you know, that they true, yeah. took that limitation off. But regardless, we're going to play it. We'll it's see. Gonna, we'll you know. see yeah. We might put our own limitations on some of those yeah, if we think yeah. they're too lax. Yeah. <laughs> Get it really nerdy on it. Listen here for more. <laughs> so Sean, you can add that to the schedule. That's it for news. Hey. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. That's all I had, unless you guys have anything. Wasn't there, uh, wasn't there another big finish bit about uh, Jenny coming back? Not that I saw. Wasn't that an official? I think that was, oh, it was, was it just rumored a while ago? Because we, we we had the news or had that already come from out. the writer that it was coming. Oh. We talked about it a couple weeks back, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. I know there's so much. I on, haven't seen Big Finish officially announced. Th- there's yet, so but. much on Big Finish's plate. I can't keep up with all of it. Yeah, yeah. there is a lot. <laughs> they make so many like, oh wow, oh wow, oh wow, and I forget. So then it's all news to me again when I hear it. <laughs> <laughs> no feedback this week, but remember, you can send us feedback by going to our website, tramandthevortex.com, and fill out the send us feedback tab, or you can. Uh, just send it to directly to feedback at travelingthevortex.com. Let's move on to our reviews. Speaking of Big Finish. Yeah. The Starman. Astronomical navigation is a tricky business. To help Adric with his studies, the Doctor sets course for Gallius Ultima, a planet on the edge of the Milky Way, housing one of the most impressive observatories ever constructed. But the TARDIS arrives to find Gallius U in a state of emergency. Tracking the return of the Explorer-class ship Johannes Kepler from its mission to the heart of the mysterious Large Magellanic Cloud, the ma- the mission that messed a mission that met with disaster. To find out what overtook the crew of the Johannes Kepler, the Doctor and his companions must journey into the heart of the cloud and beyond, into the darkness of another reality altogether: the universe of the Starmen. Bum bum bum. Glenn disagrees. No, I liked it. I really oh, liked it. Good. I thought Glenn disagreed. Nope, I like this one. I really enjoyed so many aspects of this. Um, not the first of which was that it was a almost more traditional base under siege style story that didn't seem to fall into quite the same trappings of a base under siege telling, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, just how the events unfolded, mm-hmm. um, and how they dealt with them with the, with the Starmen. Um, I think it helps that we were following some people that weren't in the base that was under siege. <laughs> well, yeah, okay. I guess I guess I can do that. <laughs> we're, we're following people going elsewhere, exploring while we still have the base under siege and the people dealing with that aspect of it. I thought the uh, the the splitting up of the companions was done quite well. Yes. And and not done in the way that, because when it happened, of course, there's that. Oh, here we go. Here's here's where we're going to do this, but then it didn't quite follow through with 
what would normally have been a oh we're going to do this and uh, you know the, the certain people getting captured and I don't know why I'm going to not obviously we can spoil this but um, when when it when it first okay the doctor and uh, Tegan. Tegan go off and Adric and Nissa it's like well okay that makes sense because Adric and Nissa was annoying as I find Adric ninety percent of the time um, he's at least kind of smart. He's book smart, maybe is the way to say it. <laughs> well, he certainly is academic smart. He's academic think, smart. I don't think you can. I don't think you can no, argue yeah. that. No, yeah. absolutely and, not. And that's what the beauty of this story is: is it really highlights that. Aspect. It really plays it up to that. It gives him some mathematical things to do. Mm-hmm. And then Earn that badge. Yeah. Nissa, obviously, we've commented on how competent she is. So it's like, okay, you put the two of those together, and the doctor takes Deegan because she's kind of hopeless. Well, know? especially in that sort of atmosphere and in that environment. There's not much for Tegan to do, so her being with the doctor makes the most sense. Right. But then we get split up differently after after that's set up, and you kind of go, oh, all right. And and thing, and then Tegan gets captured and runs off with the, the, the star man, and then she meets the guy, and then Nyssa gets there. and it's, They almost all split off individually and then come back together. Yeah, and, and Adric's got the love interest that's going on in his thing, and then the doctor's got his bit going on. I was like... Well, this just kind of completely went off the rails from where I thought we were kind of kind of headed with that, which was really kind of cool. Um, do you have the, the cast list up in front of you? Yeah. I do. The main bad guy, the main star man, the leader of the star man. Robus? Yes. Peter Guinness? Okay. Not who it. There were moments where I really wondered if they were giving Peter Davidson the opportunity to do two voices. Because he, he there were there were oh, certain see, things that, that he all. said. I didn't get that at all. Either. There were certain things that he said that he would just kind of drop his voice an octave, and I, I it almost sounded to me like Peter Davidson was doing a voice. But then I was like, ah, no, they wouldn't do that. But then I kept, well, maybe they would. So I, I just didn't go look. So, but um, I enjoyed the, uh, the 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 mechanics of how the Starmen worked. That they were all, you know, this this red coral, and then this gas, and then these weird kind of energy beings that were from the you know yeah and then and then they even discovery how important the coral and the gas was that they were actually more of the star men and yeah the, the science geek in me was really appreciative of of there wasn't a lot of hand waving it was like yeah okay i'll buy that i mean it's it felt like real science and, and at first it's like well how does that work and then it's other there was a little bit of hand wavy because it was well it's another they're from another universe right yeah, yeah so but, it's kind of like the actual physics of it don't quite make sense but they gave you enough justification for these beings from a, another universe that it makes sense that's what made me buy it was the fact that they'd come across from a different universe where they had pretty much eaten out all the stars in their universe so. which i think was a really cool idea yeah i did yeah. too i like the fact that adric got kind of a love interest that he was oblivious to through most of it <laughs> It fit in with his character, and it just did something so different that somebody young like that, I mean, it would naturally happen probably more frequently than it does in the classic series. Yeah. And I, I really appreciated it. Well, yeah, I, did but, too. I don't know why she pined after him so badly, but... Well, well, be, I mean, he gets a pretty heroic right <laughs> off the bat that he, he is, yeah. you know, mathematically figures out how to... Use that telescope. Astro-navigate to, a telescope yeah, to yeah. deflect... deflect a, uh, you know, an incoming well, it, it, it helps that spaceship like from certain the female death. version of him. Yeah, but not math, but astrophysics. That's just it. it. She was she was yeah. astronomy, and he was mathematics. That's yeah. what it, it it boiled down to. I think they were two peas in a two peas in a pod. And yeah. they were way likely like like each other. And there were so many Adric moments in this um, that I, I I was really kind of leery going into this because I was like, oh Adric, okay. I've, I've, I mean, we've gone on record. I'm not. A, I'm not the biggest Adric fan, and so or a Adric fan, or, or, or a Adric fan even. And so when we, we he first shows up and they're kind of you know we're teaching him how to fly. It's like oh he's getting his driver's license. This is kind of cute. <laughs> and then especially coming off of Fort Tuesday, piloted, I already piloted the ship in visitation. Which from some of the research I did, he's that's before this. But maybe it's because he's so poorly fluid in visitation that he decided that they wanted to teach him how to fly it properly. Well, and, and having just come off of Fort of Doomsday for Friday Night Who this week, he's making, you know, he's grousing about when are you going to let me fly the right, TARDIS right. in mm-hmm. that one. So it's like, okay, well, obviously this is probably set just after that because he doesn't get that, to fly yeah. it. And now we're going through some training simulations to learn how to fly it. We'll see what happens. Mm-hmm. But um, and so then they get there, and one of the first things he says is, oh, I'm going to go get something to eat. 
<laughs> and all I could think of was was Black Orchid, <laughs> where he's hanging out at the buffet table. So there were a couple the bottomless of, pit of a no, teenager. Nothing long wrong with that. He's no, a, no, the, yeah, a teenager. There, there were a couple of very adric moments in this that were more endearing than oh, it's that adric moment <laughs> that you know, has like oh, it's like fingernails on that chalkboard. Why? So I was really appreciative of that, and um, I thought the Starmen were kind of cool. I, I, I really wasn't sure initially that these extra dimensional things were going to work for me. But then as the story got rolling, I was like, oh, yeah, okay, this is cool. So I really enjoyed this one. I had a lot of fun with it. I did, too, just for all the same things you said about how they the, the dynamics of splitting everybody up and bringing everybody back together. I think one of the things that I got a little confused with, though, was when the Doctor and Tegan joined the crew that's going away to explore uh, the one quadrant area. And they seem to go, like, a long, far away. And then when the... The thing happens where the Starman ends up, you know, banishing uh, Tegan to their universe and killing the general and then capturing the Doctor. Then they come back really quick to the space station. And I, I missed that whole, it seemed like they went way, way, traveled way far away. And then, like, in the next scene, they're back. They came back through a portal. Did they? Okay, yeah. that's what I wondered. Because that's why it takes... I must have missed that. Um, well, they had the jump ships first. Right. Right. But they, they, they come Jump back... Jump ships is how they got to the Starman. That's how they get out to the, the Magellan Cloud. Yeah, yeah. Right. And then they portal back to the so station. So they came portal back in. Which okay. is why it takes Tegan and Nyssa and Adric so long, to, because they don't show up until the very end. That's right. Because they, they, they had to fly back. They had to bring the, right. the ship back. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that makes sense. I missed the fact that they had traveled back through portal, even though they were talking about all the different portals they had. So, okay, that's why I got lost. Um, but yeah, that was cool, and uh, I I really appreciated this because it seems like Big Finish approached this with saying, if we're going to do an, a story with Adric, let's do a story where we utilize Adric, and because it always seems like in the classic series, they never really felt like they knew what to do with Adric. Mm-hmm. He was always mm-hmm. kind of there, and it seemed like they would always make an attempt. And I don't think it's till Earthshock, which ends up being a swan song, that they figure out something to do with Adric. Well, Big Finish does one step better, and in a just a run of the mill, middle of the road story, not saying middle of the road, but run of the mill story, classic type adventure, they actually give him something to do. The telescope at the beginning, flying to the nebula. He also finds the variant in uh, the math equations in the. Uh, uh, astronomical equations in order to locate where the anomaly is mm-hmm. where they have where they're coming through at so he locates that i also like the fact that he's paired up with a quasi love interest who yeah i think that he in that strange adolescent way likes her but doesn't realize that she's yeah well, making it, it, advances it, it, to him you it know it takes him a while to yeah, figure that exactly. out yeah exactly like, oh, so i, like me. I right. appreciated that yeah. i thought that was yeah. kind of cool when the it other seems thing, like so much like not just adolescent, but just Adric to be oblivious to the fact that a woman's coming on to him. The other thing that I really liked was the fact that he flies this ship out to go find this, and the doctor says no heroics, and he gets out there and he goes, "I gotta go, <laughs> I gotta go rescue Tegan and, <laughs> and Nissa," and flies in there and does it, and flies out. And when he comes back, and the doctor makes a comment, "Of course you didn't listen to me," but you know he's not <laughs> mad at him because he job. has brought back Nissa and. Yeah. And Tegan, and it could have been dangerous, and they did lose a life out there because of that reasoning. And so I thought that was that was really bold, a bold way to to tell that. So, but uh, yeah, just I really appreciate it. it gave me. I, I I don't hate Adric at all. I've never disliked him immensely. I make fun of it along with a lot of fandom, and and I think I feel I think I often feel sorry for Adric the way that he was portrayed in. The writing of the stories. I think Matthew Waterhouse. I would got agree, I would agree with that. I would definitely agree with that. I think Adric is a terrible character, but he's only as terrible as the writers made him out sure. to be. Sure, and and, I and it's not Matthew Waterhouse's well, fault. Well, let's at all. put it. Absolutely. I, I I would go a step further to say I think maybe a little bit of that how he carries it off is annoying because of Matthew at Waterhouse and what he does, and I th- I can see that. Now it doesn't it doesn't annoy me. But I can see the annoyance that some fans have with Matthew Waterhouse. I can see that's just not their taste. Right. Um, 
But to give that character another chance in this one, and I hope in the ones that that, that are forthcoming, because I guess there's two or three more we just or a two three more. or four that uh, did we say there was four? I think there's two more, and there's then, two. There, then there's a two we discovered previously. Okay, uh, according, there, there according to this timeline, there's whatever trilogy is coming up, or is this part of the trilogy? This is part okay, of the trilogy. Okay, so there's two more, and then there's another one after that, according to oh, this. Okay. So well, I don't think it's necessarily a trilogy, but it's there are three stories that yeah. Well, he said a trilogy, but I think he meant there are three in a row together. There are three in a row yeah, together. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, as Big Finish does, they'll, you know, when they bring the actors together, that's just... Right, da, da, they just da, da, record da. them all out. Knock so. Them out. so anyway, uh, so I'm excited to see that if they continue to give him fair treatment in the storytelling, because I like that very much. So about the, Give me more appreciation for the character of Edric. It really goes a long way to, as with most things that we discover with Big Finish and, you know, some of the eras of TV that maybe aren't to your cup of tea this goes a long way to rectifying a lot of the the issues that you would have with it and kind of show you this is what we think they were trying to do or maybe this is what they should have done but and i I liked a lot of the supporting cast too Mm -hmm. i I think they all had very interesting characters and believable characters with the exception of the uh of the military commander who who bites it pretty early yeah and thankfully (laughs) because he's 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 just there to be the annoying abrasive military commander and could you use a scientific advisor? Yeah. You're not going to listen to me? No. <laughs> yeah. Okay. By the way, you're going to die soon. I'm sure. Oh, 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 it's right now. Oh, and then he's gone. I was like, oh, man, okay. So he was a little stereotypical one note thing, which I, I, I don't know. I would like to see. I understand from a storytelling standpoint, those characters are necessary. You have to have that conflict. You know, you have to have that, that abrasive nature for the doctor to go up against because we know the doctor's right but i'd really like to get one or two guys that are you know not to that extent <laughs> <laughs> gung-ho it's like surely there's somebody out there that's just, <laughs> i don't know it's just me temperance yeah everything about uh, everything else about this i liked quite a bit well shall we move on to the Tenth Doctor, Facing Fate, Breakfast at Tyrannies. That is a long title. It's a long yeah. title. It's the start of a brand new year for the Doctor, Gabby, and Cindy, and things are looking very different for the Tenth Doctor's TARDIS team. Dangerously different, in fact. Did the Doctor really abandon Gabby and Cindy back to their life on Earth? And why is he wandering homeless without his TARDIS on a myst- mystifying alien world? The truth will dazzle, terrify, and entertain you. I want to, I really, really, really want to give this a very big bump, bump, bump. But I have a couple of reservations, and I think I'm going to hold off until I hear what you guys say about it before I kind of make up my mind. I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it either. It was just kind of, huh, all right. I, I kind of, I, I, by the end of the four issues, and we kind of wrap up the Red Tardis storyline, I kind of hope that's the it. I hope we're done with it, and I hope we're moving on from beyond that, because I don't think... I would want to see that revisited beyond what they did. I liked the conceptualness of the first two stories of this. I thought it was interesting and it was really intriguing as to where are they going? Where are they? Obviously, they're locked in some sort of mind thing where they, they, they aren't in reality. There's reality somewhere else and there's not. And I really appreciate the fact that they give Cindy a little more to do than they have given to her in the past. Um, and I like her... Uh, connection with uh, Anubis, yeah, I know, newbie. Uh, <laughs> with Anubis, I think that the, I, I kind of like where they've gone with the character after what they did at the end of the series last year, turning that and continuing on with that in this, you know, the, the childlike, the, the new yeah. Anubis. Yeah, uh, I kind of like that. I think that's 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 a neat approach, and her connection with Anubis, I think, worked really well. So I kind of like where they were going with those two stories, and in fact, with these two issues, those first two issues, and I thought that was really kind of interesting the way that it played out, and you know, coming out and realizing that all of that had happened in an instant, right after where we had left off in the first series or in the last series, was really neat to realize that that all was happening there within an instant. Um, then they go off to China, right? That mm-hmm. was the next one. Yeah, ancient China, and it. I didn't think if it was China or Japan. And China. While I appreciated the <coughs> style of the storytelling, I'm not sure I enjoyed the story all that much. Um, I wasn't quite sure. I thought they would there would be more of a payoff of who the narrator guy was. 
Oh, yeah. And the reason why the chil- the child and the and the narrator had different color for the for the text bubbles? Yeah. I thought they we would get a payoff and we didn't. And I felt like that was left. I did like the the like I say the concept of him telling the story up until they arrive and then becoming part of the story was neat. But it would there it's at that point there's some sort of weird surreal sur- surreal aspect of it that I had hoped to get maybe answered but like I didn't feel like all of this was coming up when they <coughs> he hadn't met these people and hadn't learned our story yet he also talks about having met the doctor before right and I had sort of thought that we'd get an answer to that as did, well did, did you did you have a specific in mind well I had wondered if maybe there was a, a Marco Polo collection connection here oh that would have been good I didn't I didn't think of that um, but I didn't know if it was that and then also uh, the Tibetan guy from uh, Planet of Spiders. I wondered if maybe that was a connection. I also wondered if it was a connection. I, I went down a lot of roads of, okay, we're going to go somewhere with this, but it, I, what, there wasn't enough clues in for me to either draw my own conclusion or enough of an answer to give me a satisfactory answer to it. Did you? Did you have any? Uh, five, just because I think there was that one panel somewhere where it talked about his previous faces and it showed five's head on his body oh i didn't notice that yeah there was one panel somewhere i don't remember where it was it might have been in, I, i'm pretty sure it was in this volume hmm. i went all the way to the top i thought it was the master you always think it's the master. i do so, I, yeah, I, I, I jump at shadows now that doesn't surprise me i at all. he the he he had the he had the goatee and the beard and he kept telling oh, her my child who, who, who the narrator was. he kept oh. saying my child he just had all these masterisms and then you know, i've met the doctor before and then she starts calling him master master Wu or whatever his name and i was like oh they've spelled it out for us nope <laughs> <laughs> just not even oh okay <laughs> I just, and i kept waiting i kept waiting for the payoff and it wasn't there and it wasn't there and it wasn't there we got all the way to the end of the story and it was like now he's gonna reveal himself because it, it totally felt like a master story like that he had teamed up with this red tardis entity and then it got away from him maybe it was his tardis and the aliens that take i mean oh there's all kinds of stuff here no it's just this just just, just an alien thing and so Had it been that i would have liked it a bit more well and i i think maybe that's where i feel a little let I, I hate saying this because just because my expectations weren't met doesn't necessarily mean that the expectations were bad you know what i'm saying or that the story was bad right i think the problem is the, the the first two issues where we're inside this mental department store and the aliens are feeding them supposedly visions of whatever they would want to keep them happy and that they're fighting against that because of course you would the storytelling was very disjointed. It was really kind of all over the place, and it, it put me on my back foot trying to figure out what was going on. That's what I liked mm-hmm. about it. But that's what I liked yeah. about it. But then to turn around and immediately follow up with another two-parter that had also v- very disjointed storytelling differently, because yeah. we're getting it all from the narrator's point of view, I really liked that style of storytelling and how that story came about. But I think maybe coming on the heels of the first one, which was also disjointed i think it was just maybe a little too much all at once mm. that they they i think maybe that they needed a little bit more of a standard narrative for some of this mm. uh, if you were going to put those particular two things back to back well i think we do get some standard narrative once the doctor meets up with the narrator though and that by that point halfway through issue two or the the third issue you kind of have a standard narrative at that point. You do, but I mean, even even the way they're drawn, the the, the art style for you know the doctor, the, everybody looks like they're in a, a a Chinese kung fu flick. Yeah, you know, with uh, robes, robes and togas but... and stuff. They just happen to be color coded to look like the doctor's wardrobe, because it's still coming from the narrator's point of view. Yeah. So it's it's still a slightly skewed bit of storytelling as opposed to a straightforward, you know, Doctor Who comic. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of agree with you, Glenn. I, I when whatever this monster was, this entity that was you know feeding off of them, and we get the quick two, it was kind of like okay, that was cool. And then you get another two where it's the same monster, and you're kind of dealing with the fallout. But we've set up a whole new adventure for him. Like oh, okay. It, it, 
Yeah. I said I enjoyed both stories, the but I just resolution think, seemed a little. Eh, yeah, I just lackluster. I, I think too. maybe coming on the heels with just one after another. I think that's really where it just didn't work for me. Was that they were just too close together. I think maybe if they'd spaced them out a little, but I don't know, maybe I wouldn't have been happy if they had been yeah. some time there because it's, like you said, it's a thing that... to do a different storytelling technique for one of the two stories. Which is really unfortunate because, like I said, I liked both story techniques. I liked the storytelling of both of them. But just something about jamming them up against each other didn't work for me. See, and I didn't, I didn't have a problem with the two stories being back-to-back. I think my biggest problem with it is, is I felt like the first one satisfac- satisfactory answered all my questions. Mm-hmm. The second one didn't. I felt like I was left hanging, and and, and kind of had hoped that the next story, which doesn't feel connected to any of these, these either of these at all, no. would have been a little more, had a better explanation anyway. I like the substance of the first issue, or first two, and the style of the second two. Yeah, I would agree. Maybe that's the style was that. was was really cool. Yeah, yeah. And I agreed. I could, I totally agree. Um, the other thing that I thought that the second two didn't do well. And maybe because Cindy kind of got her, got to shine in the first two stories, the second two stories seem to sideline her in an odd way. Yeah. Because even though these are all copies of her that it, that's being used, it's almost like she's completely out of the picture for a really long time until the end. And then, so I kind of felt like, I suppose maybe this was my own fault for presuming, but I kept thinking she was going to have more to do with it since there were all of these different copies or versions of her Mm -hmm. i thought she was going to have something more to do with the resolution of this and she doesn't really she ultimately there's not much and i think nubis got kind of sidelined in this as well which you know they they i they set him up to be very intriguing early on in the first two stories and then we don't get much from him in this one so Again, I'm okay with that. We did get just... a fastball special, which was kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. I did like that. That yeah. was neat. Yeah. So, but I, I know. the only thing he got to do in those two stories. What are you going to do? Huck her over the wall. Okay. <laughs> I can't say that I was disappointed at all with the either of these stories. I don't think that, I mean, well, even other the than... the Titans, which are kind of built up, you know, the, the, the wall guardians. So we've got these elementals of earth, wind, fire. And it's like, oh, these are going to be terrible. And there's a two-page splash, you know splash page where they're kind of dealt with actually i kind of liked that really especially since otherwise it would have been drawn out for more issues too well that's true too but i kind of like that from the perspective of how they're telling a story of uh, it's the storyteller and i think that had we gotten more of the reality of it it would have taken me outside of the this could be a just a tale that we're learning you know and it, that's what that's that, true and so if you would have shown me the monsters if you would have told me that had that beautiful splash panel then you showed me the monsters it would have been more of a i think it would have taken away from how they were trying to develop the story i would agree it just seemed like a quick resolution to him that you know oh the uh you know we, we threw the samurai in a pit and he couldn't climb out and the the wood monster we set him on fire and the fire monster, well, we, we doused him with water. It's like, I don't know. It sort of worked. Well, because, again, well, of course it was you did. Sto- because... <laughs> storytelling perspective. Yeah. I thought that yeah, was no, from Yeah, no, again, from the storytelling's perspective, that was necessary. But it, 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 it seemed strange that the entities were built up at least a little bit initially, that these were the titans that sure, were to fight. Sure. And then, eh, we, we, we took care of it. It also lent to that whole, I, I think there was supposed to be this, how much of this is really happening type idea yeah. too yeah. and I think that that lends to that as well so the other part of this that so uh, despite whatever conflicts to the timeline that may have been caused by building a wall and inventing a printing press etc um, the genetic DNA of the villagers gets pretty much overstamped with Cindy, Cindy. Are we now to then, this is where I went with it, am I now to presume that these are her ancestors, that this is where the Wu came from? That's what I presumed also. I think that was what they were leaving okay. us with, believing anyway, yeah. Which is kind of cool. Part of me feels like it's a little racist. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, I don't, I can't really explain why it feels a little racist, but it just feels like, well, we got to explain why the Wu is so common, and that's why. I, well, I, I, I don't know so that it would have been They're any... all Cindy. Wouldn't have yeah. been any different it, to me if, like, they had replicated Jonesy, and that's why Jones is so common in that's, the UK. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, I just, I don't know. I wouldn't. Have, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't get that. I, I guess because it was such a subtle type thing that I wasn't sure if 
if, if I assume that's a, the stance they were taking, that yes, these were her ancestors and that's why Wu is such a common last name, then if it felt like because they were only hinting at that instead of taking a full-on stance that it felt like I just, it's more an issue. I don't know. I hadn't really thought of that either. I don't know that I could... It was I mean, like I, a, it would have made that's a kind difference. of weird. Okay. Would it have made a difference if her last name was Chang or yeah, you know, so yeah. any, any number? I think it's because there's how many millions of people in China. That's, well, that's, that's, true. that's why the, the last names are so common. It's because well, there's, yeah. there's just that many of them. They weren't Wen Chiang, so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. There's that. <laughs> there's that level. <laughs> nowhere near there. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> <laughs> on a scale of zero to Wing Chiang. <laughs> uh. oh. <laughs> uh, what did you guys think of issue five? Sean didn't like it. No, I, I thought it was kind of weird. <laughs> that I wonder if the, the writer just wanted to take a break from all the extra characters or why they decided to take this sidestep with it just being the Doctor and Gabby. I found it intriguing of why they would go take this approach. Then I had a big issue with this story. <laughs> it's the fact that it's an interlude, and it, it it kind of allows them to play with the timeline and insert these little stories. And I know I know Glenn's never been a, a big fan of the. Here's a, a segment of of Gabby's journal <laughs> storytelling that they've done with the font was yeah, better this yeah, time. Yeah, the font was much way, better. much 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 yeah, much it, better. It was easier to read this time. Um, but just the, just the idea that okay, so this this particular one happens after we dealt with the uh, the, the the jazz musician Roscoe because she she spells that out in the in the thing that Roscoe right. had died. We we came back to New York and kind of we're giving uh, Cindy a break. Yeah, but the doctor's getting antsy, and, and so so he and Gabby kind of go and sneak off on, on, on yeah, this other this, adventure. I got the impression this was back from last year. Yeah, right? yeah it was. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So then they land in London, and the doctor's all, "Oh no, 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 no!" And I'm like, "What?" It, it felt like the the entire story was to put that angst back in the tenth doctor that needs yep. to be going into the the specials. You nailed it. That's not my big issue with the story, though. Uh, the, <laughs> That's an issue. It, it was unnecessary. It was the the idea that Gabby has come to trust the Doctor fairly implicitly, despite the constant threat of death and the fact that she now can magically summon butterflies. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> you have superpowers, but you know, we, we need you to question him again. We need you to find him mysterious again. We need you to you know, it's just kind of like. Surely there's a better way to do that. Yeah. Plus, it felt so forced. It, that's that's yeah. that was my biggest problem with it. That you say that this story felt like we needed a buffer here. We needed a filler story here, and everything about it feels forced. Every single thing about it feels forced. All mm-hmm. the way down to the fact that uh, it it was almost a contrivance. We've got this. Big conglomerate guy that has suddenly not, he's not mysteriously, his corporation's gone. Well, it's because he's taken over by this thing that's trying to come back across or get out of its prison. And then, you know, even down to the tropiness of finding out that, you know, she ends up getting the rest of them that trapped him there in order to help them. It was just, uh, yeah, it, it, everything and see, and felt really. Here's weird. the deal. Quite honestly, that part of the story I had no problem with. If that had been all the story was, was this simple little adventure about some corporate businessman who's helping an alien entity pass over into our but if universe it had just through dimensional been rift, that, and we stopped him, and it was a one issue, yeah, I'd have been fine with it. But if it had just it. been that, that would have been even more tropey. Uh, I, I, but for a comic book... For a one-off comic, a yeah, one-off yeah, comic you book. You can almost excuse you, it you, more. You're yeah, fine I'll with give that. You that. But we're trying to use the idea of... Oh, the doctor has all this pain baggage and emotion yeah. associated and, yes. with London. No, I agree. Because I agree. of his previous companions. But to me, that's what makes it worse. Is it's this very tropey story, and then you force all of that on us as well. Yeah, no, I, I totally. And, agree. and so, okay, so so you know, what is the, the the pain of the fact that your companions have left you? Well, Martha left you because she was kind of hung up on you, and you were hung up on Rose, so she leaves. 
that's not your fault necessarily and it's not her fault it, it's it's one of those that just the relationship didn't work out you were friends and you know that's where it was going to stand and she left boom done people float in and out of your lives all the time and at no point in time in any of the other 10th dr martha coming together moments you know throughout donna's run did i feel like there was any leftover awkwardness no, between I them yeah. so now this is obviously set some years later when she's working for unit and off on her own and about to get killed and he stumbles into it and saves her and then delivers a joke yeah wrong place wrong time you know I forget exactly how it was worded. Story, story of our relationship. Right. So he's making light of it. So obviously he doesn't feel too bad about this. But this is supposed to be a big moment of angst for him. It's like, okay. So then the next one is Donna. Which, okay, that one had legitimately, for, for the fan in me. And, and fresh. It would have, have been fresh, off, off, you know, come off yeah. of it. That had some, some, some oomph and some feels to it. And this was before end of time when her brain does start to burn out potentially. So, okay, that, that that one maybe is a little legitimate because that, that wound is still raw. And then, obviously, yeah, we're going to pull the rose card out because we have to pull the rose card out because <laughs> Sten and Rose. Okay. I don't remember the rose card. I must have blocked it. Well, just that the, he's there. Is at it just the, a name drop? The, the, the neighborhood. Oh, he's, okay. he's outside the yeah, estate. Yeah, it's her, car- oh, it's her, okay. her apartment oh, complex. complex. And, oh, I got gotcha. you. And so it's like, oh, oh, okay, yeah, we're going to... But he re, he overreacts way too much to that. If you're going to psychically put the doctor into an environment that's going to affect him over Rose leaving, you, you either construct something completely fake that kills her in front of him, or you put him in that room where he knows that he can't get to her, that she's going to be trapped in the... You know, you make him relive that, that moment from Doomsday. Right. Or the beach. Or the beach and do, Yeah. Any one of those is more appropriate right. than just, oh, I'm outside her apartment complex. That becomes a little creeper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very much so. Well, and, they're trying to do something different there, location as opposed to confrontation. I, I, I kind of see why they did that. But, yeah, it, I, again, filled force. It felt forced. It felt all of these little interludes felt forced. So then he gets rescued. Because Gabby made friends with the other aliens that, that were not in exile from this one. And goes off and talks the guy out of it. And then Gabby suddenly realizes that the doctor's got many more layers to him than she initially <laughs> thought. It's like, really? Because... You didn't know that before? <laughs> what, what, what did he do differently that gave you that impression? Because none of his angst moments fed into the resolution. It, right. It, it, right, she wasn't present was for she, those either. Yeah, yeah and, that's and, a huge and problem. She's, I had with this story. And she's the uh, she's the reason why. I mean, it's not even the doctor saving the day here. It's kind of her. So, so none, none of the, none of these disjointed threads match up when you get to the bottom. But she's supposed to be like she's reading the comic through her eyes and coming up with this, and it's like that's not where I'd have gone with it. Well, and the fact that they established this as a journal entry, and this is what happened to us. I have a huge problem structurally of the storytelling. Of the fact that Gabby's not there through all of these traumatic things the doctors are going through. Right. She doesn't know what's happening. So if you want to tell that story, don't set it up with a journal format. Basically what it is is her journaling that he just feels closed off. Yeah. yeah. That's it. That's all she has really journaled. <laughs> you could huh. include The doctor's feeling her. really closed off right now. You could include could her in one all one these point. adventures and end with a journal entry. Right. That makes yeah. sense. Right. That's yes. fine. Setting it up with a journal entry creates a huge issue. Setting it up as a journal. Because there's, there's no way that she would know this unless the doctor confided in her and said, oh, I was being tortured mentally because of this. And it's like, well, the ten's not quite. That's why he flips over to his jocular. Oh, we're going to go do this now. And there's going to be this. And, you know, it'll be cool right. and everything like that. I don't know. The whole thing felt weird. And then, uh, like I said, I've never had necessarily a problem with the journal entry uh, for, for, for Gabby. I, I've, I've liked it previously. I've liked other it previously. Other than having a hard time reading. Up until now, from the standpoint that we had strange and different storytelling in issues one and two, strange and different storytelling in issues one and, or three and four, and now we've got strange and different storytelling in issue five. It's kind of like, are we not going to get a straightforward Doctor Who comic out of the 10th Doctor's run? Because it's just... Again, it's not that I didn't like those, but it just 
I, these needed to be broken up a little bit differently mm-hmm. than how they were if this is how you're going to present them. Well, I, I think the I think again, the shoot five was a bit more standard. Yeah, at least for the tenth Doctor's run, I would agree. I would. But agree. the fact that it's a, a journal entry puts yeah, it in but, a different style of of telling me yeah, the story not, than in, than just a normal comic book. I mean, it's it's, it's standard it's for like the tenth Doctor. Yeah, pages of different as opposed to right. multiple. Well, and it wasn't complete journal like some of them have been. Right. But right. That again, it just the, there was a lot of. There was a lot wrong with the story. There was a lot structurally wrong with the story. And it's not that it was necessarily bad, but wow, do I wish it was different. Yeah. Because, no, I'm going to say it was was bad. It was was... fine for what it was, I think. It just, it was unnecessary, I think. At at most, it was unnecessary. Unnecessary is even a good word. Because if you drop this in, even chronologically, after Roscoe had died, and we're going to give Cindy some time off, it would have felt a little weird. It's not even the the flashback element of it that it's it it, it just this this structurally doesn't work a story and it is a different uh, uh, a writer of this particular episode so different I, uh, issue. It was a different um, writer and artist team. as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, which I mean the the art kind of made sense from the at least from the journal standpoint. But. Yeah. So yeah, kind of a mixed bag with with these because. Uh, you know, I'm still enjoying them. I still love Gabby and and Cindy, and you know, excited and and Nubis. Want to see where, yeah, where we're going with the uh, Scooby and the gang. But <laughs> <laughs> all right, Sean, what do we got coming up on the schedule? Well, a change in the programming again, again. Um, which we we kind of knew. I knew this was going to be an issue, but I scheduled it anyway, and I should have known better than to do that. Um. Previously on the schedule, we had listed that uh, for Do- Friday Night Who this week would be the Crotons, followed by our uh, BritBox review of The Wheel in Space, which was going to be reconned. And obviously there's a recon out there. We suppose we could still press forward with it, but we want to do the new hotness. We want to you know, see, see the new one and how they're, they're doing it. Um, and as of yet, at the time we're recording this, it is not listed as available on BritBox. Now, I'm, Glenn and I were discussing this earlier that we're not sure if September is really a thing, but we both seem to remember September being announced as a thing. Um, Unfortunately, we just can't find a date. Now. But we can't find a date for it anywhere, so it may not be a thing. But anyway, um, because we're kind of locked in with our um, 350th anniversary episode what we're going to do is flip-flop a couple of weeks so we're going to leapfrog 350 and go to the events of 351 which means uh if you're following along at home what we'll actually be doing for friday night who this week is battlefield with the seventh doctor and ace so another great opportunity for you to fire up your brit box or dvd and uh and join us for that and then uh our show next week will be big finish main range story number 92 nocturne which features the Seventh Doctor, Ace, and Hex. And then we'll do some more Titan comics. We'll do the Ninth Doctor, issues 6 through 10, for his first season. So that's the official uh, now, uh, what is going to be on the show for next week. Uh, so if you're reading the schedule online, ignore it, or just flip-flop uh, with, uh, 348 and, uh, or no, 349 and 351. Just flip-flop those two weeks. Right. Uh, and then uh, the following week is uh, for Friday Night Who will do uh, Peter Capaldi's two-part story Under the Lake and Before the Flood, which I'm kind of looking forward to going back and rewatching some of those as I miss PCAP. And um, then uh, it's our big uh, 350th anniversary, and we have such an amazing thing planned. We're going to do a pledge drive. Pledge drive. We're going to beg you for money. <laughs> All episode long. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to be glorious. I think it'll be fun. It yeah, will be. It be. And, and, and obviously, if, if, if anybody is new to the podcast and going, oh my God, they're going to do it. This is meant to be very tongue-in-cheek. I mean, obviously, if you want to give us money, we will teased. take money from you. Yeah. We're not going to turn that down. But we've kind of been teasing and playing around with the idea of doing this since, well, the beginning. Uh, really I felt like. Maybe not that far back, but at least for the last four or five years. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we, we wanted to do something special for our listeners for 350. So... Begging you for money seemed like a really good thing to do. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, of course, you can find us at TravelingTheVortex.com. You can find all of that schedule information there. Again, flip-flop the two days, <laughs> or two, two podcasts. 
Uh, while they're also considered becoming a patron of our podcast, you can give us money any time of year. <laughs> we don't just have to have it on our no, pledge dive pledge. show any time, any, any day of the year. On the right side of the page, you'll find a button. Uh, I'll take you to a page where you can support us on Patreon. Any amount is welcome. And then 100% of those donations go back into this podcast. And of course, there are other links to retail sites there. A portion of those proceeds also go into this show. And, and then. Sorry, we do certainly want to throw out a big thank you uh, to anybody who is currently a Patreon subscriber since we just paid for our server for another year. Yeah. So <laughs> thank you, thank you, yeah, thank you. Thank you at least get another much. year of shows. So. <laughs> um, I was quite surprised when that bill came in the mail and I went, oh, yeah. It's a good thing that that was taken care of. <laughs> of course, you can, put, you can buy podcast merchandise on that site as well. Just uh, go to travelingthevortex.com. Anything else this week until before we close out? Until before? Until before. Before we close out. All right. If not, until next week, I'm Glenn. I'm Sean. I'm Keith. Cheers. Good night, everybody. Be seeing you. Thanks for listening. You have been listening to Traveling the Vortex. Doctor Who and all of its associated programs are owned and trademarked by the BBC. No infringement is intended or implied.